Every day, each person on Earth makes around 35,000 decisions. And that's not even counting the subconscious ones. The things that can affect those decisions are sometimes things that we don't even realize. One of those things can be religious belief. For some people, their religion is an obvious factor in their decisions. But for others, it's sometimes unrealized their, that their beliefs can affect them so much. But how much does religion actually affect our decisions and choice making skills? Religion gives purpose, hope, and stability to billions of people in every corner of the earth. And without making important choices in life, and even to some extent small choices, you really wouldn't get anywhere. To make a decision, you need some sort of foundation. But what could that be? Well, in more black and white situations, we tend to use rational thinking. But what about in more stressful situations? People typically rely on their religious beliefs and morals. An example of that would be a Jehovah's Witness in Germany during the Holocaust. Wolfgang Kusero, a 21-year-old witness who was beheaded for his refusal to go to war, expressed in his final words to the military tribunal, You shall love your God above all else and your neighbor as yourself. Other commandments read, You must not kill. Did our creator have all this written down for the trees? Unlike the Jews at the time, all Kusero had to do was to agree to stop identifying as a Jehovah's Witness in order to escape being persecuted by the Nazi government. But although it would have been way easier to say that he wasn't a Jehovah's Witness and to do as Nazis ordered, many witnesses, including Kusro, believe that the Holocaust was God's way of testing their faith. This situation runs far deeper than a typical black or white choice. In his case, it's obvious that religion played a huge role in his decision, a decision that many would see as illogical. So, as you can see, it takes more stress for someone to stray from reason to rely on their morals in order to make a decision. Along with that, there are many more examples of religion affecting decisions in history. Thinking back to the Dark Ages, anything and everything was completely dominated by the church. If you were born a peasant, you were going to stay that way for the, your entire life, because God wouldn't have given you peasant parents if he'd wanted you to be something more than that, right? The king was appointed by God, and saying anything against his rule was treason, which resulted in death. You could be burned at the stake for having a religion different from the king's, or you could be accused of being a witch and drowned. So back then, you'd be walking around eggshells trying not to get killed for some ridiculous reason pretty much every day. I think this is a good example of just how much religious belief can control not only one person's decisions, but an entire society's. And speaking of society, what about the non-religious people in it? What is it that replaces the influence of religion in the decisions of people who have no religion? Let's take the example of religion of deciding whether or not to cheat on a test. Sorry. Of course, I have no personal experience in making this decision, but anyway, it would be more likely for a non-religious person to cheat on a test than a devout Christian person. Let's say that the Christian person's name is Christian and the non-religious person's name is Jack. Christian may weigh out how morally wrong it is to cheat and then weigh out the pros and cons, while Jack is more likely to simply weigh out the pros and cons. Christian might not even get to the pros and cons because thinking about the rights and wrongs might be enough to make his decision. But there are different factors going into each of these people's decisions. Jack isn't thinking about how disappointed God would be, but maybe about his parents' disappointment. It's entirely possible for both of them to come to the same decision, which allowed me to conclude that the thing that replaces religious belief for a non-religious person is likely fear of the consequences of their actions. Of course, that factor exists for the religious person as well, but it only furthers their decision. For a non-religious person, fear of getting into trouble for cheating would most likely be a top factor in their decision to not, make, to not cheat on a test. But of course, there are many things that aren't being taken into account in this situation, like each person's personality or their current grades. So religious influence in this instance ends up being just another factor playing into the decision. But of course, there are also many instances where religion plays a much larger role in people's decisions, like in World War II. Many Japanese soldiers killed themselves because it was considered to be more honorable to die in service to Emperor Hirohito, who was seen as a demigod, than to be captured by the enemy. <clears throat> Hirohito had been believed to be a direct descendant of Amar Amatersu, sorry, the goddess of the sun, as well as the descendant of the patron goddess of the Japanese people. Because of this religious influence, many Japanese soldiers felt a strong sense of honor when taking their lives instead of being fearful. 
I wanted to share this example because this is a smaller religious influence since Hirohito wasn't worshipped, and yet people were still willing to die for him. Which furthers my point that people under stress turning, turn to their religious beliefs. War is extremely stressful, and when put under the right conditions, people will go with what they believe instead of what they logically know. They do this because people get stressed when they're trying to make a decision which is incredibly important to them. Because it's so important, they rely on more than just black and white reason. Speaking of reason, I know that the examples of religion have so far been pretty negative, and it wouldn't be reasonable for, reasonable for me to forget all of the good things that, religious, that religion influences as well. From America alone, there are over 2 million short-term mission trip participants every year, and 65% of those trips are to poverty-stricken countries outside of the U.S. There's also Operation Christmas Child, which has sent more than 135 million gift-filled shoeboxes to children in more than 150 countries since 1933. They sent another 12 million children shoeboxes in 2016. Usually, people send school supplies, school supplies fun toys, <clears throat> and hygiene items. There are various other religious charities de devoted to donating to people in need. I think this is a good example because although non-religious people can donate to charities also, religion tends to bring more people together and gives the cause a far deeper meaning than just filling up a shoebox. For, ch for the Christian people donating to Operation Christmas Child, the idea in their minds is to show God's love through a generous gift. And it's, sometime, it's the same thing with missions trips. It takes a simple, kind act and, take, and turns it into something more. Here, religion inspires people to leave the comfort, comforts of their homelands in order to go help people in need physically and spiritually. Through all of this, I've learned that religion affects us all more than we realize. You don't even need to be religious to be influenced by it, because it's absolutely everywhere you go, constantly affecting people's decisions and therefore affecting you. And to be completely honest, it astonishes me how very connected we all are when sometimes we feel like we couldn't possibly be more disconnected. I want to encourage all of you to remember that your decisions affect far more people than you or I could possibly imagine. Think about what influences you and whether or not it's a good influence. Thank you.